Hello and welcome to this video on ASO coupling. Now in this particular video we're going to talk about what is ASO coupling and in which particular compound the ASO coupling generally occurs. Now ASO coupling is the most used industrial reaction in preparing colored dyes and pigments for paints. Now ASO coupling generally occurs when aromatic diazonium ions behave as electrophiles and they couple with activated aromatic uh, compounds like anilines, phenols, naphthols, etc. To give you a perspective, uh, let me uh, get my pen on. All right. So what I'm trying to say here is that we have a aromatic diazonium ion, N2+, reacting with an activated. Now remember the activated rings have to be strongly activated rings like phenol, aniline, etc. So if I have a phenol here, I'm going to get an electrophilic aromatic substitution of a product something like this. This is the product that I'm going to get. So, um, for example, if I take benzidinium chloride that is coupling with phenol in weakly alkaline solution to form the parahydroxy uh, azobenzene. So this is the reaction. You have the diazonium ion, then you have the phenol, and this is the product formed. Now it seems that the rate of the reaction increases between 5 to 8. Below 5, the rate of the reaction is low. Beyond 8, the rate of the reaction remains constant. So let's understand why this happens. Now this happens because uh, under the acidic medium, phenols are not ionized. They're present as the OH. And OH is not that much activating. Whereas if you take a higher uh, pH medium, a basic medium, phenol will get ionized as phenoxide. And that would enhance the capability of phenoxide to activate the ring. So under the acidic medium, phenol is not ionized. And moreover, there are so many H plus ions present in it that it becomes difficult to remove the H plus ions through the electrophilic aromatic substitution. But when the pH reaches 5, the phenol starts ionizing. And between 5 to 8, the ionization of phenol keeps on increasing, reaching its peak value at 8. And therefore, after 8, the, the rate of the reaction remains constant because the phenol is completely ionized now. So let's check the mechanism. This is our phenoxide. This is our diazonium ion and the arrow moves like this. These are the reaction arrows. This attacks, you know, this bond goes to N and there's an attack here on this end and you get the intermediate. Lose the proton to regain the aromatic nature of phenoxide and you get the product here. Now, as you can notice, I've always made the product the para position. Not that ortho position does not happen, but para is always the major product because it is the least hindered of positions. But if the para is blocked, then it is the ortho position where substitution is going to happen. So if the para is blocked, then you're going to get ortho. And that example you can see is the paracresol. This is paracresol. And this is reacting with the diazo, giving you the orthoazo compound. Now, similarly, naphthols, the phenol counterparts of naphthalene, uh, they also react with diazonium ions. And it is seen that when you have one naphthol, you get the para 
that is position number four. And if we have two naphthol, it is the position one where substitution occurs. So we have um, diazonimine, it reacts with two naphthol. This is going to attack position one. And if you have one naphthol instead, position four. Now we will go into its detail later on in a separate video on electrophilic aromatic substitution. But it is seen that in these two positions, the arenium ion that is produced has two benzenoid structures as compared to attack at any other position. And therefore it is because of this, and when I say benzenoid, I'm talking about arenium ions in which the aromatic character, at least of one of the rings, is intact. And this is better than any other position where you do not get such structures. So anyway, we're going to talk about that in a separate video. Now, when it comes to amines, the story is a little different. Because amines are the ones which are used itself to make the diazonium ions, and they are made in highly acidic medium. One is diazonium ions need acidic medium to form. I mean, amines require uh, a highly acidic medium to convert into diazonium ions, number one. And secondly, highly acidic medium will ensure diazonium ions are formed and remain intact, not get... Uh, you know, under azocoupling with the amines left over, that's because whatever amines are left over, their N are protonated by the H+. They form ammonium ions, and therefore the reactivity goes down. So the initial diazodization diazation of aromatic primary amines is carried out in strongly acidic media, and this will also ensure that the amine is converted to the cation and prevented from coupling with the diazonium salt. So the only way of ensuring that aniline reacts with diazonium ions in couples is in less acidic media, slightly basic media. Now, when aromatic amines, there's a possibility that the attack could be on N or C. And it depends upon which kind of a compound you have. With primary amines, it is the N attack which is most likely. Because as you will notice, in the intermediate, the nature of aromatic character is intact. So you have the diazonium ion here, you have the primary aromatic amine, and attack occurs through N, and you get this intermediate, and you can see it's aromatic, loses a proton, and you get the NN coupled product. Now, if you have a secondary amine, aromatic amine, then you get both N and C coupling. So with secondary amines, you have two products formed, one due to NN coupling, the other due to NC coupling. I'll just show you the products formed there. So this is NN coupling, this is NC compound, and you see the NN coupling product here, and you see the NC coupling product here. Again, the major product depends on the size of the alkyl group attached to the secondary mean. If it is methyl, well, the NN coupling is a little bit more. But if it is bigger and bigger and bigger, steric entrance becomes more important than the para NC coupling becomes more. With tertiary amines, since there are no hydrogens present, there's no other option other than NC coupling. So this is how it happens. Now, we must also realize that diazonium ions are weak electrophiles. They're not strong electrophiles. They can very easily go from the system very difficult to attack. Therefore, they will only attack those substituted aromatic rings which are strongly activating groups. But if you want to do the reaction on weakly activated groups, you can do that by making the diazonium ion more electrophilic. And that can be done by adding electron withdrawing groups. So they're relatively weak electrophiles, only react with strongly activated groups. And therefore, it will not react with anisol or mesitylene. Mesitylene is 135-trimethylbenzene. Uh, so if you add NO2 in the ortho or para or both, you will enhance the electrophilic nature of the diazo group and it will be able to react even with these compounds. Thus, 2,4-dinitrophenol diazonium cation will react with uh, you know, anisol and 2,4,6-trinitrophenol diazonium cation will react with even 135 trimethylbenzene, which is mesitylene. 
I hope you enjoyed and you understood the video. Thanks for watching.